Welcome to another episode of Sports and Songs Podcast. We're on season five, episode number 17. Andy, tonight's the sports edition. Sports, sports, sports. That's what we got tonight. A lot of sports. Uh, February 26th, 2024. We're coming into March Madness, as they call it. We're getting there. You can see it from there. I heard uh, first time ever they got the women's tournament, men's tournament for Big Ten are uh, here in Minnesota at uh, Target Center, I believe. First time ever the women's sold out every game. See, that is that is huge. And now I see just because you can see Caitlin Clark, Iowa's a top four seed, what day they're going to play. I can see those all selling out. But even the first round games, first few days when you know she's not playing, those are sold out. I so can't that believe that. Game. I would have assumed, you know, the Minnesota games and the Iowa games be sold out. The others maybe or maybe not, unless you have to buy the session and then you just show up for yeah. a couple of games. Either way, though, those early games are sold out when Clark's not going to be here. So that says a lot for the game, I think. That's, that's tremendous. Um, so like I said, March Madness is starting here next week, but most of it's already started for the Minnesota State here a week or two ago with state tournaments that are going on. Wrestling kicks off this week. Uh, girls hockey was last week. But let's start off with the trivia question, Andy. Fire away. And then I'll turn it over to you for all of our uh, various sports. The trivia question today is, what happened in 1935 on this day relating to the New York Yankees? You know, we're not big Yankee fans here, but the trivia question is, Fairly good. On okay. this day in 1935, what did the New York Yankees announce? And we'll get to the answer at All the right. end of the show. <coughs> All right. Breaking news as we heard later earlier tonight, Ole Anderson has passed away. Remember the uh, original Minnesota Wrecking Crew, uh, the original Four Horsemen? Okay. Ole with Russell with Flair and Arn and and uh, guys down there and Tully Blanchard down in Atlanta wrestling. Uh, Booker, um, great mind for the sport. Um, to, 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 this is the cleanest word I can think of. A lot of guys loved him. A lot of guys thought he was an asshole. Yeah. There were, you were one or the other with Ole. But he ran a good business, so everybody stuck around with him. Uh, Rick Flair put on here on his X page or Twitter page, whatever. I, I still call it Twitter. I am forever thankful to Ole and Gene for bringing me to Crockett Promotions as a cousin. Rick Flair was listed as a cousin of Ole and Gene Anderson. It launched my career. I will be grateful forever for you giving me opportunity to become who I am today. We didn't always agree with each other, but to be honest, to God's truth, is you and Gene started me. Rest in peace, my friend. And a lot of these other ones popping up about Ole too is, hey, they didn't get along. Business is business. But you hate to see someone go that you, you know, got into business with and literally blood and sweated with for years. And uh, like I said, Ole was a, had a great mind for the business. Did very well with it. But he he drove a tough ship. He drove a tough ship. Yes, yeah, interesting. Okay. NASCAR, if you watched that yesterday because you're a good American, this won't be a surprise to you. There is the finish from last night's race. <laughs> Photo finish, as they say. Three cars. 0. 0.003 seconds is what he won it by. And the sad thing is, that's the third closest finish ever. Wow. So imagine that. <clears throat> Daniel Suarez from Monterey, Mexico, where I visited a couple years ago. So That's right. We're, we're you know, six degrees You're of separation. Old. Your old uh, stomping grounds. Yes, my old stomping grounds for a couple weeks there. We're, we're, we're darn near related, him and I now. Um, Blenny was second. Kyle Bush was third. Bush point zero zero seven seconds behind. So it was a great end of the race. For all of those of you who say NASCAR is nothing but left turns, suck it. That was a great race. Wow. Lots of crashes. Lots Total of finish. Yep. Yes, beautiful. Some more sports news. Everything kind of in a purgatory and limbo here. Okay, this happened at girls hockey again last night. Open that the slap shot into the net. It's open that they had the breakaway. You see every now and then the person biffs it and falls or they miss the shot. This is a slap shot in the empty net. There you see the other gal didn't like it and came and gave her a little check. You know, 
it's like basketball. There's a breakaway. They dunk it. You want to lay it up or dunk it. What's the difference? It was a slap shot into the net. An empty net because you pulled your goalie because you were behind. It's not like they beat you up, then spat in your face. You're behind, and there's a slapper. It's in. <coughs> Excuse me. So get over it, you whiny little girl. All right. Lynette Woodward. I mentioned her last week. Caitlin Clark's chasing the scoring record. And everybody says, well, you know, she, Lynette, they didn't have scoring records when Lynette played. They didn't recognize the woman's game and stuff like that. Here at Sports and Sports, we recognize the game. Yes. There's Lynette's numbers. 3,649 points in her career. In her career, she was the first female member of the Harlem Globetrotters. And at age 38, she became one of the oldest members of the newly formed American Women's Professional Basketball League, the WNBA. Okay. So they say Clark's 51 points to break Pete Maravich's all-time record. she got two games left, Minnesota at home and Ohio State. She's 33 points from passing Lynette Woodward, largely recognized as the collegiate women's all-time scorer. There you see I got Pete's numbers down. He's 36-67. Now, if you look at Maravich's numbers, 36-67, you look at Lynette's numbers there. Um, you don't see a three-point percentage for Lynette because they didn't have it then. Yep. Pete Maravich didn't have a three-point line then. So Caitlin's going to break these with a three-point line. Should there be an asterisk by her record then? Like the home run record, they'll put asterisks by for steroids or games played and stuff like that. Should there be an asterisk next to Caitlin's? I'm not taking away from what she's done. She's done great things. Wonderful things for the sport. Should there be an asterisk by it, though? It's a fair question. You know, just... Saying, not saying, but saying. Like I said, like you said, if you heard the show the last couple of years, <coughs> excuse me, we love our Caitlin Clark, but business. Yeah, and and you know, like you say, Maravich <clears throat> didn't do anything wrong. Um, Woodard didn't do anything wrong, and Caitlin Clark didn't do anything wrong. It's just different time, and there was different rules, yep. different scoring. So it is what it is. Uh, phenomenal for all three. Yeah, but. It's fair to say asterisk because just imagine how many Maravich would have had uh, or, or would have, you know. And, and, and you know we're going to see it when Caitlin breaks the record. There's been some computer guy out somewhere, someone at some sports bureau place has charted everyone at Pete's shots. And if there was a three-point line, how many would he have had? Oh, yes. I'm sure some analytics uh, guru came up with it, yeah. And you know they've had it. They've been sitting out about a year now. So I'm waiting for her to break the record for them to come out with the numbers. Yeah. Oswald was trying to figure it out here, but he fell asleep watching one of the games. And of course, it wasn't, you know, wasn't a pretty sight. Okay. I actually saw this interview there and watching a Met spring training game. Uh, ben put it on his Twitter page. Francisco Alvarez does a live TV interview in English after once being too afraid to order his own dinner in English for fear of messing it up. So he's gotten comfortable enough with his English. Yes, it's a spring training game. It's an interview. Was it broken English? Sure. I knew what he was saying all the time. He was relaxed. And, you know, I'm not ripping on the other players who have to have a translator there. But I think it just kind of shows his dedication that not only is he working on becoming a great catcher, he wants, he said in this interview, he wants to learn to call a better game. He's working on his hitting. Oh, by the way, I'm going to try to learn another language at the time. Um, as much as we say baseball is a universal sport or international sport, he's probably going to get along with more. And I'm not trying to be racist when I say this. He'll probably get along with more pitchers speaking only Spanish than speaking only English. You know, but yeah, sure. be about 50-50. So him getting a better grip on English can only help his game. Yeah, it can only help everybody involved. Um, you know, I'm sure he got along with could speak to at least half the pitchers in just Spanish. It's fine. I've heard a lot of other players say because of playing winter ball and other balls, they've kind of learned at least Spanish terms in baseball so they could talk to other players 
or they'll learn just the baseball terms in English to talk. <clears throat> like I've said before, the story of a Japanese pitcher when he came up. They asked the catcher, they said, how do you guys communicate? Because he doesn't know English. And you don't know Japanese? He goes, well, we both played Winter Ball in Mexico, so we spoke Spanish to each other. <laughs> you know, it, that's what you got to do to get by in sports. So, But good for him for learning the, the language and trying to be a better communicator for everybody. Yeah, very good. June 22nd this year, the new Town Ball Classic, cancer, knocking out cancer. Uh, we were there last year. This will be in Maple Lake. Uh, so there's your teams. Loretto and Avon, Howard Lake and Kimball, Maple Lake, and Waconia are your six teams this year. So uh, pencil that in on the calendar there, Dan, Saturday, June 22nd. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm going to be going, but I might be. Now, the game to watch there is at Maple Lake. Now, didn't they win it last year? Yeah, and it's well, it's all six different teams that were in it last year. So, and how, and Maple Lake won the Class C title. Yeah, um, and now they get the is always this good. Year. They're in the state usually. Uh, Loretto's tough. Kimball, Howard Lake. This this will be good. So, for the folks thinking about going to this, uh, they did it. The first annual one was last year. Yeah, uh, very it's good. Exhibition, it's exhibition baseball, but still, good times were had. Players are there; they're talking. It's for the Randy Shaver Cancer Research Benefit, so you get to see Randy. Uh, ran into Ashley from ninety three X there last year. Yeah, it's seven inning yeah. games. Uh, a very good event, and I think this is going to take off and be successful and make. Uh, it's going to become an annual deal uh, with yep. the revolve, yep. you know, relocation, uh, different location, I should say. Every year, but six teams, three games, seven innings each, all back to back to back, and good, good fundraiser. That's fun. I like yeah, it. Good times, good times. I like to. I'm going to put that on the calendar to see if that works. I don't think it is, but uh, that should be fun. Happened again at Wake Forest. They beat Duke. They started the field, and those Duke players got hurt and run over. Security's got to do something about this. I guess I got no. I mean, you can see some of the. What, Wake Forest guys biffing it on the floor themselves there. I guess I got no problem with them running on the floor. First of all, I want to know if you're going to sit that close to running on the floor and you're running on to celebrate, name me three players on your own team. Or are you just there because it was something to do for that day and now you're going to run on the floor for something to do? I don't know. Security's got to do something about it. They got to get those players off the field or off the court as soon as they can. Guys are getting hurt. Um, it, it, I just, I'm not a fan. I get going on the court and celebrating. I totally get that. But security could hold them back for 10 seconds let the other team get off the court. Yeah, interesting. It's a it's a phenomenal thing. It is it is what it is. I mean, it's, I mean, you got to do losing something. Team, you don't want to sit there and watch everybody storm the court and wait. I mean, you could do that. Just go back to your bench and sit and just wait a minute or two, then try to sneak off the side. But, you know, try to get to your own bench to start with. It's hard. You got a good, a good point is that the, you know, the true fans charging the court because they're so elated with the win, or is it just the local college kids uh, drinking beer that night and like, hey, let's do it. Let's to say we took part in it. I don't have a clue. <clears throat> yep. The players' names are, but hey, let's just do it. Hmm. Stephanie McMahon Helmsley has now been named as part of the cover-up allegations from her old man. Um, she did step down a couple years ago, but now her name's coming up. I just think it's going to be a time for uh, Triple H, Paul Levesque has to step down because your wife is being accused of it now. So if she knew it was covering up, you had to have known something. And it's just, even if he didn't, the guilt by association is going to get to it, I think, pretty soon. So you're going to see a lot more chips fall in there in the WWE, now TKO-owned company. Girls hockey ended this last weekend state tournament. <clears throat> War Road over Dodge County, the four seed against the three seed. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, any Dino one, whatever. Yeah, that semifinal was good. Uh, so like I said, coming up, wrestling and swimming and diving. And now we're not making excuses. We are fans of some of these sports, but I'm going to say it again. We got it for our new fans. 
Yes, we put up the team brackets for wrestling. We didn't put up the individuals. We're not going to put up swimming and diving. We don't put up track and field because there's just so many brackets to put up. Wrestling, you got four classes for A, AA, AAA, and you got all the different weight classes. Just the Minnesota State League for wrestling for individuals, click brackets, it sends you right there. We're not going to put it on the page here. We're not going to put it on our Facebook page. We'll put the links to it, but we're not going to show the charts. It's just too huge. Fair enough. We're, we're too low budget for that. <laughs> NCHC Hockey, College Hockey. We'll talk some College Hockey here to wrap up the show. North Dakota 1, St. Cloud State 2. So there you go. There's their, their overall standings, everything going pretty good for them. North Dakota just looks really good this year, which is really hurts to say, but they are really clicking. Watch for them in the playoffs. CCHA. The Beavs are in first place, Dan. Wow. <clears throat> uh, Minnesota State Mavericks, or as we used to call it, Mankato. Uh, Michigan Tech. And the Tommies are up there. Those are your top four right now with one weekend to go. Tommies and Michigan Tech. Uh, the Beavs are hosting Michigan or Minnesota State. So one and two kind of uh, battling out there that last one. That kind of worked out good for the schedule makers. There's a week off, then we hit the, the playoffs. So, should be fun times. Should be fun times. Starting there in hockey, like I said, one and two for Beams and Minnesota State. <coughs> and then we'll go after that. Northern Sun, a little baseball. Uh, Beams 0 and 4, 0 and 8 overall. But hey, it's baseball, so who cares? I'd still go watch them. St. Cloud State 4-0 in conference, 6-7 overall. But Concordia 2-0, 5-0 overall. Wayne State's got a good team. So we'll watch them more. And softball, no conference games. But it looks like everybody's doing well overall, except for uh, Southwest Minnesota, Crookston, and Wayne State. Thanks for playing. And now Dan's favorite part of the show. Yes. We talked about this. We had meetings with it. We've talked to our lawyers about this. We try not to get into politics on the show. Here we go. The Florida Panthers revealed their Black History Night jerseys. I am not opposed to this. I am not in favor of this. My point on this is the NHL said no to Pride Night jerseys, no to Pride Night stick tape, no, no, no to Pride Night stuff. But they're going to say yes to this. Quit talking out of both sides of your mouth. I don't care if you do one or not, if you do none. Mm -mm -mm. I don't have a horse in the race. But if you're going to do Pride Night jerseys or not do Pride Night jerseys, be consistent. i not saying one cause is better than the other. I'm not saying one's worse than the other. I'm not saying, well, you did Black History and you do Pride Night. You better do pink for cancer and you better do this for that and that for that. I'm not saying that either. But if you're going to shut out one group and allow another in, without sounding like my grandma, shame on you, NHL. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough, you know, it's a tough thing, but you have to have the you know, consistency. And these are two big groups that are always trying to, are always out in the front for their organizations which I respect totally, the LGBTQ and the black history people. I, I have so much respect for them for at least going out there, losing their fight a lot of times on stuff like this, but they keep fighting. Very proud of them. You know. The the other thing is, I think, was it NHL that they had the uh, the practice or the warm-up jerseys? Yeah, it wasn't even, they couldn't even do warm-up jerseys for Pride Night. Oh, they couldn't? Okay. They couldn't even do that. They couldn't put rainbow tape on their sticks. But they're gonna let this happen for this. So yep. So this is this is for actual, uh, you know, game uh, yeah. one night. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, like I said, the only thing I had against the NHL with the the Pride Night is if they would just done it over a course of a week instead of it being over a three month period. You know, like this is Pride Week. Every team's gonna have their home game and have their stuff. That sort of issue I had with it. But that's just because I'm lazy and can't remember things very well. If they're going to let the Panthers do this, then you got to let them have to do the Pride Night. But that's – Yeah, it's it would be interesting. Well, let's put it this way, Andy. Here's here's another yep. concept. That's all is, I 
Okay. Uh, let's say the winter sports is you know, hockey and NBA, yep. NHL. You know, let's say Christmas rolls around and some team announces we're going to go with a Christmas theme jersey. Right. And some teams are going to go with, uh, you know, Hanukkah or a Kwanzaa. And some are going to say we're not going to do any. Well, you're going to run into the same. You're going to yeah. run into the same deal. And, and you know, for Christmas, no one's ever done it. They've had, you know, maybe holiday weekends or holiday games, but there's no jerseys. And so Mother's Day, Father's Day, you see something with that in baseball because those holidays happen in during the season. their season. But <clears throat> when it's a pride, a social cause kind of a thing, it's it's tough because yeah. you got to allow – you should promote it for all the teams or none of the teams or all the – causes or none of the causes yeah and maybe you know they have off-season meetings when the when the board and the ownership meets and they, they could discuss hey which one are we going to do this year we'll focus on you know this this cause <coughs> and, and you know and nothing else and the next year we'll cover this cause and nothing else or are we even going to do them all or do none or have, or have however they want to do it for practice warm-ups but we're going to call it out for the game so it's one of those consistent thing. I think is what you're getting at is a consistency. You either got to vote yes or no. You can't say one group no and say one group yes. It's it's it seems common sense, right? Yes, you you would think. And if you notice, if you watch NHL games now, they do certain camera angles and they can change the advertising on the boards when you watch on TV. Yes, that you know it says all quick trip all around the boards. A different camera angle, you see what the actual real advertising is. Okay, so for those certain camera angles, advertise your Black History Month, advertise your LGBTQ, advertise strikeout cancer, advertise, you know, whatever. Spade and you to your pet, whatever cause you want to put on there. Yeah. That. If you don't want it to be in the studio, you want the TV company to do it, great. Put a little banner on the boards for it. Like they do a target field, they got end races. They could on. NFL even have the halftime uh, sponsored by this, or the intermissions yep. for the hockey. Uh, this cause is the highlight, or the or the, or the you know the focus of this Put intermission. The they want to do something on the field, or on the ice, or on the court during the game. And I think the logo makers have a stake in it. The jerseys they're selling more jerseys. It's another thing to buy. It's yeah. It's a good point, though. But I agree. Yeah. We're not for it or against it. We're just saying, saying you have to be at least be fair. consistent in what you're doing. <clears throat> yep. Yep. Like I said, I, I'm very, very, I, I guess, proud of the two groups for for stick to it and always trying and everything else. God bless you. Go for it. Because a lot of the groups I support don't do that. You know, so maybe I'm a little jealous that they do it, I guess. I don't know. But good luck to you on your fight. It's a, uh, it's a good point. Uh, and it's a valid argument i think right yep. not for or against it but just what is it you can't have it both ways you can't yep. talk out of both sides of your mouth now speaking of marsh madness coming up andy we normally don't follow the nba or the timberwolves right not that much with the nhl or the wild uh what i'm gonna do i'm gonna i'm gonna post a little bit more of some minnesota timberwolves stuff as they're getting closer to clinching uh, playoffs, the seedings, those kinds of things, because they're going to be in the next win they get is they're going to be starting to break the top 10 in most wins in their ever career yep. history season. They've only been around 35 seasons, which is a long time. Yep. Uh, but they're creeping up there. They're having a good year. Uh, I'm, I've been posting, I posted a thing last uh, time on Facebook, some of the, some of the standings, but it's going to be fun to watch. Now we're going down the stretch There's only 25 games left in the season, but uh, that'll be it. Uh, I don't really follow the NBA that much or the NHL, but, the Wolves, this might be a kind of a lightning in a bottle here with this yeah. team this year, so it could be fun to watch. Uh, football, there's so the NFL draft is in April. The UFL and spring football starts in March, and so there's nothing really coming up here at the end of April. Uh, I'm sorry, end of February and into the beginning of March. I think next month will follow a little bit of the spring football if needed, but – for the next four weeks, there's not going to be much to cover on those sports. Now, I have one thing for football to throw out there. Yes, go ahead. I read Charlie Walters today. Uh, Charlie Walters, St. Paul Pioneer Press reporter, for those of you who don't know, said the Vikings are listening to Justin Jefferson trade offers. Not saying he's up available, <coughs> but they're going to listen. You got to, you got to listen. 
So I got talking to a guy at work who's a big Viking guy. I says to Sean, I said, hear me out on this before you go for my throat. Consider the teams I'm talking about and the money they got, how they're willing to do it. You trade Justin Jefferson to the Cowboys for Trey Lance. Then you take Kirk Cousins and trade him to whatever team you need to to get a draft pick to get Marvin Harrison Jr. So next year you got Harrison Jr. and Trey Lance. You you bite it for a year or two, but you would be studly in about three years. And you'd be fun to watch those two years before that, my opinion. That's interesting. Yes. Because Jefferson has cut off great years. He's got a big contract. Trey Lance has been holding the clipboard for four years. So you got money mar- moving there, you know. <clears throat> Marvin Harris is going to come in as a, a rookie deal. So you're going to save some money for a few years to invest in an offensive line, half used court or half used running back, and away you go. Now, Jefferson stated at, at one point, I don't know if it's true or not, but he wants to wait to see what the quarterback situation is before he wants to see if he wants a trade or if he wants to stay. Um, and that's that's fair enough, too. And that would be a good point for you. If, if Cousins is going, are they going to do something with Cousins to move him? And then Jefferson does want to go. Fair enough. You get a chance to get Harrison, Trey Lance, and uh, another draft pick yep. or two. You're not sitting too bad. Or you trade to him back, to... It's going to be expensive, but he's going to be a mentor also to train in. And I don't know. Yep. I don't know. I think the NFL guys either have it or they don't, regardless of the yep. saber metrics and everything they do. <laughs> the Vikings did yeah. so much to get Christian Ponder because he was the perfect quarterback, passed all the tests. It wasn't an NFL quarterback. He had small hands. Remember yeah, that that's was a big, was that big thing for, the for quarterbacks. Hands. Look at the hands. But, but now, good look, good thing about Christian Ponder, his wife, Sam Ponder, with ESPN. That's right. So, congratulations, Chris. Congrats, congrats. But, yeah, that's you can do all the scouting work that you want. I think yeah. when it comes to the NFL, guys either have it or they don't. Yeah. You know, it's, That's why you play the game. That's why you play the game. You can't invest so much in just all the uh, – the mathematics and the you know the statistics and the saber metrics. All right, the Twins made a trade today. We'll cover yes. more uh, next week, but the season's just about starting for the you know they have two or three games under the belt for the spring training. They traded to get what I think is going to be a fourth outfielder for the for the Twins. Yeah, uh, the player from the Dodgers who was really with the Marlins. No, the the Rays. He Rays, was with yeah. the Rays in the offseason, got traded to the Dodgers, and I don't know if he ever even played with the Dodgers in, until this last week maybe, and now traded to the Twins. So <laughs> yeah. they say he's from the Dodgers. He was really from the Rays uh, and then was part of a deal, a package deal in the winter to go to the Dodgers. But now three games into the spring training, he yeah. was traded. So we'll have an outfielder. Player to be named later is who he was, I think. And then we'll get a middle infielder that's a prospect. Not a, I don't know position he is. And then that's going to be going – what we're losing is Noah Miller, a shortstop, a high-level prospect for the Twins. Very good second-round pick, Noah Miller, uh, and the Twins have traded him to the Dodgers, where he's going to be able to escalate and move quickly up that organization, whereas the Twins are so heavily loaded with right. prospects in the shortstop position, he's not going to get any playing time. Now we get that outfielder. The bad news is it looks like Austin Martin probably isn't going to make the team. Trevor Larnick isn't going to make the team. I don't know where Matt Walner is going to play. Uh, now, unless he's the starter, and then this guy's the fourth guy, and who I knows? Like who Larnick, Willie Castro. Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a Larnick guy, but it looks like these guys are going to start down in Triple A. And they had Michael A. Taylor that they're looking to kind of get, but I think he's just a center fielder only. I don't think I read him already. Dodgers is a center fielder that could back up Buxton, but also plays the corner spot, so he can fill in all over. Yeah, so, and, you know the Mets are in that situation too. They got a lot of guys at short that can come up. But you got Lindor, so you start moving guys to third and second. Do you make them trade bait? What do you do? Yeah, it's a good problem to have. Noah Miller is a great draft pick and a great player, and he won the Gold Glove in minor leagues last year for one of our farm system teams. So he will be good. But when you draft that many shortstops and they're all that good, we still got Brooks Lee coming up. Noah in another organization, I think, is going to be a good fit for him. He'll be able to escalate up quickly. And we're not going to have to find another spot for him in the organization. The guy in the Mets organization right now, Jet Williams, is doing very well, very impressive. I like the shortstop. name. Jet Williams, uh, shortstop, 
So he would put A and double A. So they're either got to move him to second or the outfield. But he's just a little his name fits him. He's just a little fire plug. I watched him play. Um he doesn't you, 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 if you didn't have names on the jerseys, they're all out there in white t-shirts. The last guy you think is Jet Williams is Jet Williams. He does not look like a Jet Williams. You know? Yes. He, he looks more like a, you know, whatever, anybody else, you know, Joe Blow. He doesn't look like Jet Williams. So now, I'm not sure what draft pick Noah Miller was. Maybe he was second, but I know who was second for sure. Twins are playing the Yankees today, and guess who the catcher was for the Yankees? Ben Rortved. Twins okay. drafted him second, a second-round draft, draft pick, and traded him to the Yankees. Remember that year the Twins had all these catchers, so they got rid of Mitch Garver, they got rid of Ben Rortved, and then they kept uh, Ryan Jeffers. So Rortved's still with the Yankees. Uh, went for two for two, I, I believe, today playing against the Twins. So he's a former Twin. He's the second-round draft pick. I'm not sure when Miller was, but he's also very high. That's it. I think it's yeah. a good a good deal. And then the 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 outfielder that we got, <clears throat> I believe that he's a ten million dollar salary type of a guy in that range. Okay. And the deal okay. is that the the trade wasn't as balanced, so the Dodgers are going to eat half of his salary. I'm okay with that. So it's another deal like the other trade that we got. I think we're going to get a ten million dollar outfielder. And pay five million this year for him, and I think this is the only year we've got him for. I don't, I don't, I don't know how long years he is. He's only 20, he's twenty-nine Dodgers. years old. Dodgers got everyone else, so they're not, they're not, they're they're sitting good. They're too deep at a lot of positions that are, are very good players. The Dodgers are gonna play pay one of our infielders more than they're paying Otani this year. <laughs> yes, look at that. <clears throat> so it'll be fun to watch. Uh, Twins, like I said, in full force. We'll do that uh, coming up here in the next couple of weeks. We'll really focus on Major League Baseball. Also, college baseball and amateur baseball coming up. We've got a trivia answer, Andy. Yes. Well, Fire away. What happened on this day in 1935? February 26th, 1935. What did the New York Yankees announce? I, I got nothing. It was an old. It was an old guy. It relates to an old guy. In this, in this case, it's Babe Ruth. Oh, he's been around for all those years. Twenties. Is that when they officially named it the house that Ruth built? No. Uh, good question. It was around that time frame, though. But he, they announced on this day in 1935 that he was released by the Yankees. Oh. Now he was quickly picked up by the Boston Braves, but um, getting long in the tooth, they uh, they cut Babe Ruth. Wow. This day, 1935. So Saturday. that's a trivia question for what it's worth. Interesting, I thought. Yes. All right, we'll be back tomorrow next week with some more NASCAR uh, college basketball tournaments. A lot of March Madness in high school and a lot of college conference tournaments going on. The fun begins. State tournaments wrapping up too. Should be fun. Have a good one. Bye.